Maybe it doesn't need to be practical, but it is so fun. No, I don't know if much that comes to like weddings really needs to be practical. A really friendly dog that's gonna like greet all your guests as it goes down the aisle. This is The Guide Gals, a modern wedding focused podcast by the experts at Here Comes the Guide. I'm Chelsea, a designer and inspired creative who's probably racked up over 2,500 hours on Pinterest and the friend who's going to shoot it to you straight. And I'm Caroline, a social media manager who is obsessed with dogs as ring bearers and will inevitably cry over your wedding video. We've seen it from all sides. We've been brides, planners, bridesmaids, and have worked with standout brands throughout the industry. Think of us as an extension of your wedding party and hang out with us as we share the ins, outs, ups, and downs of the road to I do. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Guide Gals. We're really excited for another episode and this one is going to be so fun. Um, We're going to be talking about some current trends that we absolutely love in the industry. Yes, I'm super excited. Uh, I Since we work in weddings and we're like constantly, you know, doing things, I think our cookies know that. And so... (laughs) Like pretty much like every time I go on TikTok, Instagram, I'm sure Caroline experiences Mm -hmm. the exact same thing. Oh, yeah. We see wedding stuff everywhere. We're not mad about it. Um, But (laughs) uh, we we have for this episode, we've gone ahead and picked 10 categories for trends. Mm -hmm. And we've each picked our favorite current trend uh, in those categories. And we're going to share them with each other and share them with you. Um, Yeah. So, yeah, we're really excited to get into this. All right, so the categories um, that we have broken it into are going to be food, attire, florals, decor, uh, pets, bachelor and bachelorette parties, colors, Mm -hmm. types of weddings, um, photography, and videography in one category there. And then our last one is just a miscellaneous um, category. So anything goes for that one. Yes, yeah. Okay, but before we jump into the episode, I would love to know what beverageinos we have today. I have drank most of mine already which is like ridiculous um because this was like pretty full um but mine is a cold brew um because I think Chelsea had one last time and I was like that sounds good so mine's a coconut vanilla cold brew yeah which sounds really exciting I also have a cold brew I have the exact same thing that I had last time which (laughs) is like the Starbucks vanilla sweet cream cold brew which is what I order every time I go there it's so good but I've been better it's so good like making them from home but today I don't know no you're so good at that yeah I was like (laughs) I I mean I like making it at home it also is like I don't know why I feel like Starbucks is so inconvenient for me to get to but it usually tastes Mm. better than what I can do this one though is good okay all right so um we're gonna get into it so our first trend um is food and uh the one that I've brought isn't exactly food but I'm pulling it into this category. So I really mm-hmm. love champagne towers. They're they're so cute. And like they make such like a great photo opportunity. Um, mm. And I'm not really sure though how practical these are. I don't know. Like there's a lot of spillage that happens. I'm not sure if you right, can actually right. drink or like if most of the champagne that's poured like kind of goes everywhere. Um, mm. But either way, I'm into it. And yeah, they're just so cool and fun and like the movement and personality in the pictures is is really cool they almost look like like a cake like setting like the types of pictures that you would get from it I feel like are really similar to Mm. like a cake cutting set of photos so I love these I feel like they're so fun you're so right there's just like a lot of fun and whimsy to it but I would also be so nervous about it falling over or like if are you supposed to like grab a glass from that I don't know yeah that would that would scare me yeah, do people actually drink the champagne from the champagne towers? I'm not sure. Um, and I don't know if I care just because mm-hmm. like I think the purpose <laughs> of it is for like a really cool photo opportunity and almost like a prop um, that you have right. like at your celebration or whatever. So um, right. yeah, I love them. Maybe it doesn't need to be practical, but it is so fun. No, I don't know if much that comes to like weddings really needs to be practical. Um, it's just fun. I want to talk about vintage wedding cakes for the food trend now also just so you know if you are listening to this um wherever you're listening to it uh, we actually are providing some photos of the trends that we're talking about so check us out on youtube we have um our video format there so you can kind of see some of these things uh because you know we're going to describe them as much as we we can but it might be helpful for you to see them there 
So specifically because vintage wedding cakes was something that I hadn't thought about or didn't know much about until recently I saw some pictures and just became a topic of conversation. I love them. They are so so cool. They do. They're so cute. They do give vintage vibes, but I feel like you can do it in a modern way. So I think the like even the like cherries on top of the picture that Mm -hmm. I chose gives it really that vintage vibe. But what you right on the cake could be very cool and edgy yeah I love that like I I've seen like some quirky ones like I like where people write something like almost cheeky on there like I've seen till death on the cake and I think it's like a place where you can do stuff that's like really fun and out of the box and like I don't know with like a cake like this it has so much personality and I don't know I really like this instead of like the more traditional cake which like those are beautiful too but oh um, yeah but we, we love these vintage cakes. I've even seen people doing them like for birthday parties and like all of that too. Like yes, I've seen them all yeah. over the place and I really like it. I like that too. I think it really kind of like we said, like just add some more fun. It is still is like practical. You're going to eat the cake, yeah. but I think it just adds, <laughs> adds a lot. Okay. So for trend number two, we're going to talk about attire and wedding attire. So one thing that I have noticed recently is like embroidery. Of course, it's been around for a long time. Like that's not a new trend. But I saw this picture of embroidery on gloves. Um, And I think sometimes they could say like till death, kind of like what we talked about for the cake. But the example that I have, it says to have and to hold, to love and to cherish. And it's on either like a sleeve or a glove type of thing. But like what a cool detail to put into something that you may not think about. Right. And I think it's also so special because it's like an intimate detail. But like if you're wearing them during the ceremony, like and you're holding hands, like that's what you see. Like the other person, Mm -hmm. your partner is going to be able to see. I don't know. I just thought it was such a cool thing to do on something that you you would normally wouldn't think about yeah I I love that I think like anywhere that you can incorporate like little personal details even if like you're kind of the only one that sees it or like obviously Mm -hmm. like this shot that you have it's like like the little detail shots that capture it like for like the wedding day memory kind of thing it's just really cool and it's special to you like you know it's there so I I really like it right Yeah, uh, so the one that I came up with or brought to the table here is bows. I think that they're so feminine and like cutesy. It's almost like a youthful feel, but um, I don't know. I have like, I I went a little overboard on the photos for this one, but uh, I brought three. (laughs) Uh, So obviously they can be incorporated in wedding dresses. I especially love this picture of the bride going up the stairs. These, Mm -hmm. the the bows on this one are actually like stoned. Like they're like, uh, like, crystal like bows on there which I think is so unique but but you can like incorporate them in so many different ways in decor um obviously for your bridesmaids like uh and -hmm. then I even saw like I think Ariana Grande like her wedding she had like just like a really simple like headband bow in her hair and I just think it's like so sweet looking so I love I love the bows (laughs) I love the pictures you chose too like I love that you can make them with small details um yeah. or like that bigger bow on the back of the dress I also love I that love you're wearing that. bows on your shoulders right now like it just is all tying in I didn't plan <laughs> this but like I really I wish that I would have gotten that detailed with like what shirt I put on this morning yeah <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing um, okay, so the next category is florals. So flowers are a huge part of weddings. It's always like mm-hmm. something that we like say to budget for too. Huge part of decor. Um, so for yeah. me, uh, I am really loving the high impact florals. Um, so mm-hmm. what I mean by this, and if you are watching the video of this, you'll see like what I mean. But this is basically right. flowers being used like decoratively in just a huge way. So you can do it like all over the place I think that my favorite way that it's done is like the ceiling arrangements when it's just like these huge like flower displays like this picture that I chose um it's like I don't know it's huge it's like breathtaking like this is a really big Mm -hmm. thing but obviously you can do it like down your aisle um at like an altar like I mean there's like countless places that you can do it even like huge flower centerpieces on tables would be really cool too yes um yeah I think it's such a great I I'm a sucker for flowers I've done like florals at a couple of different weddings so this is just such a fun thing to do and it's something Mm -hmm. that like guests will talk about adds so much personality yeah I love this so much mine is actually kind of like a 
almost on the opposite end of the spectrum. Not not quite, but it is more minimal in terms of flowers. Um, and it's a style called Ikebana. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. That's what I was always told it was. And if I'm wrong, that's okay. Um, but Ikebana is a Japanese style of um, arranging flowers. I think it somewhat translates to um, like making flowers come to life. Um, and it is such a unique art style for flowers. So Typically, what is used is a pin frog at the bottom, and it's usually a shallower dish. Um, so it just looks like the flowers are just standing on their own. Um, they're not being supported by a vase. They are just supported in that pin frog. Um, this also makes it a more sustainable um, way to arrange flowers because you're not using floral foam or a bunch of other things. Um and it also just creates this very whimsical feel to mm-hmm. it. And when done really well, like it just adds a different personality again, emotion, feel. I know I'm going to say this a lot in this episode mm-hmm. because I look for those things and I love them. But um, I got to do a wedding where we did Ikevana for it. And it was just so cool. It was in an art museum. Like these people love the perfect place um, for it. Right, right. They loved very creative things. Like they were very much into this and it was so fun being able to do that. But if you do want to do Ikebana, you need to work with somebody who has done some of that before just because, yeah, you need the right flowers and the right materials for it. Um, But yeah, some of the examples that I'm going to pop up here are just, I think, are so cool. That's, That's why I picked this as my trend. Yeah, they're really cool. I've seen this almost in just like um like dinner party stuff, like on Instagram or yeah. whatever, like like as like table decor, I guess. Um yeah, like centerpieces. Yeah, yeah. I would not have ever known what they were called or like what that kind of mm. arrangement style is called, but it's so cool. Um whimsical is the perfect word, um, like you used. Yeah. Uh but yeah, they almost look like sculptures to me. Like it's like in every yeah. single um arrangement is gonna be unique. Uh Mm-hmm. I think like they there's probably no way to make every single one look exactly the same. Um, right, right. So yeah, I love this. It's really cool. And yeah, definitely like pretty much the opposite. <laughs> I love that we like covered both ends <laughs> yeah. of the spectrum there. Um, yeah. But because yeah, usually so naturally cool. with Ikebana, you're going to use less flowers. Not all the time. There yeah. are some examples where like you can still use just as much. But I think you really can make it go a long way because it's very artsy, but it's much more minimal. Mm-hmm. you can get really creative with the dishes too i feel like that could be yes. really cool like the yes yeah, the glass pieces you use it's super yeah i think it's so fun continuing i guess just to talk about decor then um trend number four like our category is a decor um and something that i wanted to talk about is actually ceiling installations which we kind of talked about in terms of florals but i wanted to take that a step further in some of the things that i've been seeing um i've seen like wicker lampshades um the example Mm -hmm. that i have has these really cool lanterns um big floral installments like using this overhead space that we don't normally think about i think is something that i love seeing people do because it really adds to the overall feel of the whole space yeah it like completely can transform a space and they're so cool um I've seen this like a few ways i obviously love the flowers that people do up there um But I really like this picture that you have included with, like, the stained glass lanterns. I've never seen that before. And, like, how cool. Like, the color that it brings to it, too. Um, Yeah. It's really neat. I think they – whoever, yeah, they nailed this. This one – I love this one. It's really pretty. Um, So I chose – vibrant color and especially textures um incorporating a Mm. lot of those so this like really veers away from like that traditional um wedding color palette I would say or Mm. what I feel is like a traditional wedding color palette which would include like obviously like lots of creams and blushes and maybe like light blue um but but yeah I love like that that people are like throwing like these vibrant colors in there and having a lot of fun with it. Um, Mm -hmm. So, and especially the textures, like you can do this in so many different ways. I love like the candlesticks, like the really colorful candlesticks, which your picture uh, for the, the ceiling installations has in it. (laughs) Yeah, it does too. Like it, it adds that dimension. And then um, another example that I thought of too, which I don't have a picture of, but I think you did this in your wedding is like uh, adding like cool rugs yeah uh, yeah maybe for like your aisle uh like 
walking down the aisle like that area yeah. so you can get really colorful with that and just like the texture of it um yeah. oh yes <laughs> I think it's of really course cool. I'm biased like I loved that <laughs> we got to do that my yeah. parents had a lot of <laughs> vintage rugs for it but you're right like it adds this warmth and texture and again I think that kind of goes with mine but almost on a different level like you're also thinking about how that texture goes on the floor yeah, it, and texture can absolutely be used in the hanging stuff too. I know you said like wicker baskets, yeah. like the texture and that is like so, I don't know, tangible. I don't know if that's like... Absolutely. No, yeah, yeah, for user, sure. But that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so the next category is pets and um, Caroline and I are both pet parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are, yeah, like attached for sure, <laughs> committed, obsessed like to our animals. I would love to incorporate mm-hmm. like... I, and I love when people do incorporate pets uh, on their wedding day. It's so cute and like personal yeah. uh, and all of that. So I love, I've seen a few um, like people like actually like brides walking their dog down the aisle, which is like so cute and funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that if you're going for something that's like a little bit more of like a laid back or um, like Maybe you're wanting to avoid anything feeling too like formal or stuffy, mm. um, which like a very formal walk down the aisle. I love to mm-hmm. like love that. Right. Absolutely. But it, it depends on the look and feel you're going for, because like if you have like a really friendly dog that's going to like greet all your guests as it goes down the aisle, like how cute and like think about the photos that would come out of that it would be like just so cute. But yeah, I think that that's awesome if you can like bring your pet mm-hmm. Um it's just so it's funny. so fun. And like, yeah, it really is. <laughs> cute. Like they're a part of your family. Right, right. So. And it makes sense for them to be a part of your big day. And again, I think mine complements yours really well because I picked these lockets. Um, they're from Sincerely Capri. If you haven't heard of them, they're so cool. They do like a modern take on bridal lockets. So you can wear them like as a locket. You can also turn it into a pin for your bouquet. So if you wanted to have a special Mm -hmm. picture of someone who couldn't be there, um, you can have that in there, especially like your pets. And they have a specific pet locket and you can do like their paw print on it or like a special engraving. I love that. Isn't that so so cute? cute. So not only can you have that picture, but their paw print and then you can also have it beyond your day. Like it's a keepsake that you can continue to have, whether that like keep it on the pin or wear it as a necklace. I don't know. I just think that's so cute. And I also like I have a dog and I have two cats. I would never bring my two cats to a formal event like that because they're (laughs) insane. But this would be a cool way like to incorporate them if I wanted to. Yeah, it's not every dog is going to like actually enjoy being at a wedding. Like if you have a dog that like has anxiety, like the locket might be the way to go. Or like if in like pet hotel though. (laughs) Or if you have a destination wedding, like you you may not physically be able to bring them. So that could be an option for you too. Yeah, the logistics for pets definitely are tricky. Not all venues are pet friendly either. So yeah, this is a really cool option to be able to incorporate them. I love that. For sure. I am super excited to talk about trend number six. Our category is bachelor and bachelorette parties Um, or just bachelor and bachelorette in general. Um, But specifically, I think both of ours are about the party end of things. Mm -hmm. And I never had a bachelorette party so I love looking at these trends because it's just such like a fun thing to think about and imagine um and so the one that I chose was like the camp kind of vibe not like roughing it but like glamping um and I've seen these themes done so well like the attire that goes along with it the decor that they pick the venue that they have like wherever your lodging is it's really cute so so cute some of these parties almost do the like vibe of the parent trap um the camp that the girls go to and like everything is kind of themed in that way but it's all around the bride um so like it could be called Camp Jenny or whatever else it is. Mm-hmm. And like there are so many games and activities to do alongside this that I think are super cool. But it's not like your aver- like normal average what you think of as a bachelorette party. Right. Right. And if you're not watching the video of this and you can't see uh, the image that Caroline chose for this, um, I just have to say like the way like I know she said like Camp I can't remember the name that you used, but like Camp Caroline, if it was your party, like the merch that is created in this picture for it. Like there's like cute hats that say that, um, like 
I don't know. Like there's like a bags game yes. that has it on there. Um, you could do t-shirts. There's like a mug on this picture. Yes. It's like adorable. And like, once again, I'm like thinking of the photos that can be captured oh, from yeah. it. Um, would be so cute. And then everyone gets like really cute keepsakes. And these are like actually like, like they're not cheesy. Like you can design it and make it like yeah. cool and like... I don't know. Like, I would wear the hat. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, again, no one knows what it's from, right. which is really cool, too. I like you pulling out the... First of yeah. all, I like that you call it bags. Where I live, we call it cornhole. I don't understand. Like, I think there's, like, a small section of the Midwest that calls bags. it bags. But I'm, like, pretty passionate about no, this. No, I think that's... Yeah. Hilarious. Like, I love the, the differences of that. Of course, in case you guys didn't know, we live in different places, so that's why. But right. you could get the, like, whatever last name, like, if you're taking your partner's last name then it could be camp like Mm -hmm. whatever that new last name is going to be and then you could have that for a while and then always like that's a gift that you would actually use and can yeah sorry there are so many things in this that I'm like I love this theme I think it's so good yeah and it's it's super personal too which once again I love like any way that you can incorporate that right is is really cool Yeah. So, so what I chose is once again, like kind of against like Caroline's against the, um, like what at least I view as like a traditional bachelorette party. Mm -hmm. So, um, or bachelor party, like either way. But when I, when I think of that, I, I kind of think of like clubby, like going out, like sparkly dresses, like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but there's like tons of ways that you can do this. So I, really like the idea of like a relaxation weekend or like a wellness kind Mm -hmm. of thing. So I'm seeing people do this um, more where it's like almost like a spa kind of thing um, with, you know, like your closest friends, like you're going somewhere and staying in. I have a picture that I included um, and it's like people like outside watching a movie, like just hanging out, like slumber party spa vibes, I think. So good. It's like so fun and like sounds so dreamy. Like it sounds like the best time to like go and just be able to relax and I don't know, hang out. Um, So yeah. Just looking at this picture, I'm like, I want to be there. Invite us, (laughs) invite us to this, please. Yeah. Like matching pajamas you could do. Yeah like spa treatments for everybody comfort food like snacks like I think the whole deal yeah (laughs) yeah uh the next trend uh is going to be colors so um going against what I said with decor um (laughs) neutral color palettes will never go out of style so I love neutral color palettes Mm -hmm. but I've specifically been seeing brown being used a lot not just in weddings but like in like fashion and stuff too I feel like brown is like having a bit of a moment um and I really like it so I I love like that like really dark deep brown Mm -hmm. and like nude like colors like almost like skin tones is like what I think of too um so yeah and I also love like people using it for bridesmaids dresses too Mm -hmm. like like this picture I included has like just like these like silky like really deep brown colors I think it's unique in a way to be neutral um, yes like for a fall wedding this would be so nice or even yeah. like winter like I think it would be really I feel like really it's a color that's not used a ton and I feel like I do really love the way that's yeah. being incorporated in these because I am I'm a neutrals girl I really am I think both of us like, very much are <laughs> which is funny because then the color that I chose was bright and bold like I really do love this shift from I think we did have a lot of blush light blues simple greenery and and white and cream and ivory like they're pretty standard and those are also aren't going to go away anytime soon but no we're obsessed with those as yes well. like all of them yes <laughs> like we love to oh my gosh but I think the bright and bold colors is being done in a newer way that I'm seeing recently and that's what I really love so mm-hmm. The picture that I have has very bright, bold colors for the bridesmaids dresses, but then they also continue that in the bouquets. Like they're not straying away from like the color and just really leaning into that. And I think that's what I really I love. love. Um, I specifically love this like yeah. combo of the yellow, pink, orange, almost giving like citrusy vibes too, which is another trend that we've mm-hmm. seen a lot of, but I think they've just really nailed it in this one. 
Yeah, no, that picture you chose is so, I, I love it. And it feels like, like, I just like love when people tend to like break the rules. Not that there are rules oh, yeah. like for weddings, but like, I love like here, like all, like they're all different bridesmaids dresses and they're all different colors mm-hmm. too. And like, yeah, like just mix and matching. It just like has like that eclectic feel that's like unique. Yes. And, yeah, I love it. I love it, it too. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We also want to talk about uh, types of weddings. So that's the trend number eight we're going to talk about is types of weddings, which may sound like a weird category for us to pick, but you'll understand as we talk through it because the one that I chose is weekend weddings. We're seeing that a lot more. And I really love this because you're making such a, a bigger event out of what is already a big event. Um, a lot of people are traveling to see you, are going to be coming from far and wide, and then getting to hang out with those people you love the most is like so fun so I've seen it done in ways where it's like more local you're at a lake and you have all of your friends and family in cabins and you're all together but I also follow Lauren Geraldo um personally on my uh Instagram and I think hers was super cool so they um had a destination wedding they had all their friends there and you guys would kind of follow along in some of their adventures like their rehearsal dinner looked stunning gorgeous like did have those bright fun colors but then they also had a boat day like they were doing everything together and I think those memories that you would take away from that are so special it's so cool like the the activities that can be incorporated in it as well because you are together for a whole weekend so like if you especially if you go to like a certain place that has a lot of stuff to do um it can be really really cool and I just like love anything that turns stuff into more of an experience for like all of your guests like obviously you want like your wedding day to incorporate all like the stuff about you but when you can like really make your guests like part of the like I don't know full experience like really immerse them yes in in it it's like so memorable it's so fun um and I would like to be invited to one please yes me too a weekend wedding um okay so the wedding type that I'm gonna talk about is like a European inspired wedding Mm -hmm. um like castle vibes Mm. that kind of thing um I've been seeing so much of this and it's so cool like an enchanting magical like fairy tale um kind of setting and this is like really gonna depend on um the venue you choose mm. um that's like gonna like bring about these uh because usually it's like in like the structure um and like architecture and stuff right. of like the venue that you choose but this is just like so cool it has like such a classic feel and yeah if you're wanting something that feels really like i don't know magical enchanting i'm using the same words over <laughs> again but no yeah uh, absolutely like this is gonna do it for you and and we do have like you don't have to go international to do this you don't have to go to europe so true um If you're looking for this kind of vibe, we have uh, some editorial pieces on Here Comes the Guide, our website, Mm -hmm. that have highlighted these in different areas. So feel free to do a search for that, European inspired, on Here Comes the Guide, and you'll be able to find some venues that can help achieve this look. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, I just think it's so cool. Yeah. Especially like bonus points if it's near like a forest and you have like a magical forest vibe like along with it. You can get some photos like that. Yes. Like a woodsy situation. Oh, Um, Yeah so pretty i drool over these venues that we have on here comes a guide because they are you can just mm-hmm. feel it how like magical and just regal and elegant and oh i love them yeah so our next category is photography and videography which like i love i could look at like wedding media like oh all, all day yeah <laughs> like i i love it so much so the the trend that i chose is film so i've seen a lot of people even hiring like a separate photographer to capture like or videographer too to capture like film content from their mm-hmm. wedding which i love so much um i don't know what it is about film photography but it has like it's just like so special like i feel like it has um like a different feel to it yeah. that's like I don't know it, it's just special. it is like it, it is. has like like a bit more of like a like a keepsake feel mm-hmm. I don't know sentimental yeah um we love digital photography too, absolutely I but will say. I'm obsessed with all all of it but like I don't know there's just something about mm-hmm. film I think it's just knowing like what it takes to get that captured like it is really hard and it's I feel like it's more pressure because you you don't get so many takes with it or I don't even know how it all works but you're so right like each I don't know how it works at all <laughs> each picture just feels like it's filled with emotion and you just like feel like you got to be part of that moment yeah. I mean that actually okay it, 
it transitions well into my point too. You'll see that Chelsea and I really do love very similar photography things um, because yeah. I <laughs> love seeing blurry photos, not necessarily like, oh, blurry, like that was a mistake, but like intentionally so because it adds again, that emotion, mm-hmm. that feeling like you just get more out of it. I feel like I especially love when it's a reception photo because I feel like you feel the energy from it, like how much fun the dance floor is. But also when you're doing those like portraits together, I think it's just so intimate. And yeah, I love it. Of course, like I wouldn't want my whole gallery to be filled with blurry images, but it really is such a good addition. (laughs) I love them. No, I love it so much. I've been seeing so much of this. Mm like the blurry photos it's definitely trending right now and I hope it like never goes yeah. away you can even see in like my film photo examples that I included um they're like a little blurry <laughs> too I just I love it just like you yeah. said it like captures like the emotion in the movement especially like that dancing picture right. like I don't know it it's really great so good. I love it so much the running uh all of it Okay, so for our last category, we actually just called it miscellaneous because we wanted to have the ability to talk further about whatever topic we were thinking of. And sometimes Mm -hmm. some of these trends don't fit perfectly into these categories. Mine is a repeat, however, because I just wanted to talk about it. Recently, I saw this picture of um, a bridal party in each of the girls in it had a different flower. So they each had their own bouquet of, let's say, like tulips or peonies or whatever else it was. And then the bride had the combination of all of those flowers in her bouquet, mm-hmm. which I think is just yeah, like, I love that isn't so that much. so special? Like, I think that's so fun. And um, I couldn't find the exact picture I'm thinking of, but the one that I'm using as an example, like they each have different bouquets that all like fit together so beautifully and I think it Mm -hmm. just like complements the other flowers so well I love this picture that you chose for lots of reasons like the headbands the colors Uh, like the dresses are so unique like I I do yeah they're so cool um but no I like the the idea of like the bride having like the combination of like all her bridesmaid flowers like it's like so sweet I love that detail and once again, it's not even necessarily something that everyone will pick up on, but like, right. you know, right. Um, and it's just really cool. Okay. So my miscellaneous is like a little bit all over the place. Um, but basically I saw a TikTok of a wedding that was, I believe it was astrology themed, mm-hmm. um, which is really cool yeah. and unique. Uh, first of all, especially if you're like into like Zodiac stuff, But what they did is they had a seating chart for their guests and they sat people based on their zodiac sign, um, which I don't know about like the logistics of that, like totally, (laughs) Um, but uh, it like kind of got my wheels turning and got me thinking about that and just like how cool, like, like you can be like, I don't know, like incorporating once again, bringing your guests into it and making them feel like really part of the experience and like thought Mm of, I love unique seating charts. I promise this all relates together. Um, But I think it's like a really great way to like, I don't know, pull your guests into the experience. So these pictures that I've included of seating charts are, I don't know how much they really bring the guests into the experience, but they're really cool, by the way. One is like, um, like a bookshelf. I'm not exactly how they find their seats based on that, but it's really, really Mm -hmm. cool. Um, And then the other one is like, margaritas like bags of margaritas which are just like so cute yes. but um I don't know I had just like a few ideas of like you could even have all of your guests names written on place cards uh with of course like uh instructions on where to sit um but like for example I'm a Libra like on the back you could like write like Libra and then like have like three traits of that sign mm. and obviously you could like do that for all your guests this would involve knowing like when their birthdays are so like that's so you know, true. <laughs> uh, like, make sure that you know. Right. But there's so many different ways that you could do this. You could even do like you don't have to get as specific as like zodiac. You could do like uh, like the earth and fire and uh, yeah. water and air. I think that's what they're like all of right. those signs and like the traits of that. That would be really cool. Or like I know Caroline, you're into flowers, so like yes. um, I believe every month has a flower. Mm-hmm. Like you could put like like the little like flower on there. Oh yeah. Uh, My um like little yeah. 
thing. My best friend, <laughs> I, that, that sorry, just sparked a memory for me. She did her table seatings by like different flowers because um, her mom was a gardener and like they loved flowers and it was such a cool experience. And I remember hearing a lot of the guests talking about like, it's I'm not just sitting at table number eight, like, oh, I'm over at table like rose or like whatever it was. And I thought that was such a cool. That's cool. Yeah, I love that detail. Yeah, so like bonus points if it's something you love. Like obviously if you're not into astrology, you can do like flowers or like Enneagrams or... Or books or... Anything. Yeah. Anything. Birds. Aren't there like monthly birds yeah. too? <laughs> or like stones. Like birth months have like stones. I've seen like, people do like countries, I think. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's or like, yeah, if you guys are like really into traveling, yeah. um, that would be really cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, like I said, it's a little all over the place. I love unique seating charts of every kind, but I think that it's like, like I said, a cool place where you can like get your guests involved or make them feel yes. special and thought for of. sure. Okay, so while we could absolutely chat about trends for hours, I'm going to cut us off here because we will absolutely be talking more about these in the future. Um, There are tons of categories that we didn't even get to that we had talked about beforehand, and we will get to those in another episode. Let us know if there's anything that we missed that you want to hear more about. Yes, um, this was so fun. Yeah. Like, we obviously love weddings. Um, We kind of, like look at wedding stuff we're so immersed in weddings that like talking about trends is just like so exciting for us so this was really fun like Caroline said we're absolutely going to touch on trends in the future and like we want to touch on it in so many different ways Mm so uh keep an eye out for that but um yeah if there's anything that you want to hear about certain trends that you'd love to hear us talk about um I episode ideas that you have even if you just like want to say hi um uh feel free to like reach out to us we have a contact page on our website which will be linked um in the notes of this um but yeah feel free to reach out to us there seriously yeah and if you want to see more of the behind the scenes talk with us whatever else you can also and i would highly encourage it follow us on instagram Mm -hmm. you'll see lots of fun things that we do there and also get to see some of the things that we're working on um next yeah yeah definitely follow along um but this was so fun yeah i guess until Uh, next time next time Uh, cheers caroline cheers (laughs)